Okay, so I had mentioned that I suspect it could be a RAM problem, and um, one of the voltage regulators on this board is, I, I verified that it is not working. It's this one right here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be replacing it. Because I still have two left from the ones that I bought for the, um, for the CPU board. So, let's uh, pull out this non-working voltage regulator and put a new one in. Goodbye, Mr. Voltage Regulator. You are dead. Okay. Here we go, one pin gone. This one, I didn't leave anything for the soldering iron to grab onto, so... I need pliers this time. There we go, two pins gone. And... Uh, there we go, good. Now I gotta suck all the holes clean. Yummy, yummy. Give me my sucker. Some on your voltage regulator. Ah! Oh, this stuff doesn't mix very well. It looks like ass. Ugh. All right, smear it around there. Stick the bitch onto the board. Okay. Put the screw in. Put the nut on the other side. Okay, tighten the lay screw. I have to clean all this shit up after. I don't want it to be a mess. Here we go, we have a Q-tip. Clean up the goop. Cause it is messy. It's like white poop. Beautiful smoke is going in my face and it's gonna cause me to get cancer. So now we take said ram board and we put it in the altar. We take said CPU board and we put it in the altar. Turn the beach on. Uh, that's interesting. It still isn't clear, does it? Still not clearing. So let's look some more. So I've noticed something unusual about this RAM board. We turn it on. It vibrates. 
Why? That's weird, it's vibrating. The ram chips vibrate? Okay, so I've been waiting for what about a month and a half, two months or something like that. And I finally got my dip switches in to fix the uh, RAM board. Um, the thing about dip switches, um, in 1975 they weren't exactly the most common thing. Today, dip switches are used in all kinds of stuff. They're used in alarm systems and garage door openers and things like that. But back in 1975, what the hell were they going to use them for? We didn't really have a lot of alarm systems or garage door openers or anything like that. So, this uh, dip switch, it looks like the, the plastic is starting to deteriorate on it. Um, I don't think they knew what they were doing when they were manufacturing these. So up here, if you can look, if you can see that, um, dip switch, the dip switch is right here. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's like crystallizing. The plastic is starting to like crystallize. And the dip switch doesn't work, uh, at least on bit seven. There's, it's a seven bit dip switch, so. I gotta replace it with the ones I ordered. I tried to order something that was identical to what was on here and they don't make black ones, as far as I can tell. They usually come in red or blue. So I ended up getting a, a couple of little red ones. They're the same kind of style, but uh, the, most likely they're built a hell of a lot better. Now, to replace a dip switch, <laughs> You can't exactly clip the leads on it because they're buried underneath the dip switch. What you have to do is you have to destroy the dip switch. There's, see, there's two uh, things you could do. You can either just uh, desolder it and hope that you can get the damned thing out, um, but you risk destroying the board doing that as well. Or you can destroy the switch. Um, these boards, um, getting a new RAM board for the Altair will cost you about $200, but the dip switch itself is, what, I think it paid like two, three bucks for those two, something like that. So which is the better one to destroy? The dip switch. So we're going to take the dip switch and destroy the fucking thing to get it off the board. What you gotta do is you gotta try and get the top of it off and then you can um, work on the bottom half of it. So this will be fun. Let's do it. So here's the dip switch and here's a pair of cutters to destroy it with. So just kind of get into the corners and snip away at it here. And should be able to <laughs> bust it apart pretty good. Yeah, pieces are gonna start flying off here. Didn't you notice that uh, there's a rocker switch? Huh? There we go. It's starting to come apart very nicely now. I don't know what this is made out of. It doesn't feel like plastic, although it probably is. Um. It feels a lot more solid than plastic. Because a lot of plastic is soft on these things. At least the, the newer style ones, you know, ones made in the last 30 years. Not the last 40. Because this isn't the first time I've destroyed a dip switch because I had to replace it. But yeah, this one's totally fucked here. Well, oh, it's really fucked now. Look at this shit, eh? There we go. Alright, now. <laughs> see how much more plastic we oh yes look at that that looks great look look how well I destroyed that damn thing that's pretty good okay so soldering, iron, soldering irons heating up check this out you can play music on these <laughs> I'm a musician these should come out fairly easily what I'm gonna do a little bit of solder on each of these Good. And the less heat you can apply to a circuit board to do shit like this, the 
better off a circuit board's going to be. If you sit there and fucking, uh, like, just continuously put heat on the board, you end up destroying the board. Which is not good. The last thing I want to do is destroy this board. Because it's a little on the rare side. Okay. Yes. We now have a remove dip switch. Look at that. Oh, I'm thrilled. Look how good that turned out. <clears throat> Alright, now I want to do the bottom of the board. And I gotta get the solder blobs off of it. I know nothing about addressing boards, so I had to get a little bit of help on how to configure this dip switch once I get the damn thing on. And yes, so that's why I don't use that fucking solder wick. I fucking hate solder wick. I've said many times, fuck solder wick. Because you sit there, you apply heat, you apply heat, you apply heat. And then you end up with a fucking ruined circuit board. That's why you heat up a little bit and you suck it off. We have my new dip switches. Let's turn the board over and see how pretty it looks. It looks very pretty. Yeah, I did a very nice job. Okay, I'll show you the job I did here. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. And you can look at the back side too, and uh, where the hell is it? It's right here. Look how good of a job that is, eh? Yeah. Okay. Now, we put the dip switches in. So I'll put in basically the same orientation that the old one was in. Should fit in there quite perfectly, because they generally don't change things. Um, it should be like the same basic width as an IC. There we go. Oh, look at that. Nice and red. It actually makes it look a little more modern. <laughs> Alright. We got, uh, okay, I guess gotta tack on a couple of corners and solder the rest. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't get nothing there. there yep. Good. Perfect. Now we solder it all on. Yeah. This is going beautifully. Beautiful. That was nice and easy. Alright, soldering iron off so I don't burn myself or burn this place down. I did a very nice job on that. It looks good. The uh, dip switch is firmly in place. Look at that. Beautiful. So now what I need to do is um, I got a hold of some people on the Vintage Computer Forum because uh, I have no idea on how to address a fucking RAM board. I don't know anything about this part of it. So I um, put a post on the Vintage Computer Forum and asked about this and somebody asked for scans of the board, or like for really good pictures of the board. I threw it on my scanner and took great pictures. And uh, they told me the positions to put the dip switch in. Okay, so apparently what you need to do is set this address board to all zeros. Now to do that, uh, to set it to zero, well to enable zeros, it has to be closed, not open. Um, so, address uh, bits 4, 5, 6, and 7 will set to 0, 0, 0, 0. So, and the first three, you leave them off, apparently. So, <laughs> we're going to see if it works now. I, I set the dip switch to that, so you can see. I'm going to put the RAM board in. Make sure it's off. <laughs> Let me blow up the RAM board. <coughs> okay, bring Altair face forward. Okay, Altair. Are you gonna bring me some goodness here? Okay, we got lights, which is always good. Um, 
Let's uh, do a hard reef. Oh, this is stuck on. That's interesting. Okay. That makes things really interesting. Let's uh, examine some. Uh, um, we get random things in there. I'm happy seeing that these are not consistently on anymore, so that's a good thing. That is good. Um, examine address one. Can you write to address one? I would like to write zero to address one. Pause it. Now read it. Maybe I go unprotected? <laughs> uh, examine address one. Uh, deposit. Oh, I did it! Oh my god! Did you see that? Okay, I put it unprotected. I, pressed, I switched the unprotected, and it wrote um, a 7 into address 1. Now examine it. Oh, it's stuck there. The altar's working. <laughs> Holy shit, it's fucking working! Oh my god! The Altair works! <laughs> Holy fuck! Okay, examine address one. And deposit uh, one to it. Oh, <gasps> look at that! It works! Holy fuck! <laughs> oh my god! It's fucking working! You know what this means? I have a working Altair months of work on this thing and I have it working. <laughs>